check, check, one, check, two. All right, all right, all right. Let's make sure the widgets work. Sound doesn't work still. That's fine. <coughs> Give people a minute or two to get on here. I want to check the chat too. Boy, I do need a shave. Oof. Let's do that tomorrow. Cool, the chat's working too. All right, uh, so apparently enough people liked what I uh, recorded a couple weeks ago, so I figured, what the hell, why not? Um, I really don't have anything else going right now. I've worked on looking for a job in a place that has no IT jobs and uh, worked a little bit on the Extra Life prizes uh, today, just trying to figure out how I'm going to handle it, and I think I figured it out now, so hopefully I'll make some good headway tomorrow. Um, but for those that don't know me, my name is Glenn, uh, also known as Torgo. I used to be the uh, host of the Pl PlayStation Nation podcast for like 12 years. Um, still with PlayStation Nation, just don't do the podcast anymore. But I got stuff to say, you know, stuff and junk. Uh, it is weird because uh, I'm so used to bouncing things off somebody else. Uh, but I'm also doing the Twitch thing. So I've got uh, an Elgato uh, uh, cam link, I think it's called. Um, so instead of using the webcam like I was using last time, I'm actually using our really nice video camera that we got for events like E3 and preview events, that sort of thing. So hopefully the video looks better. Uh, the, the cam link's weird. It works really well, but it's a little weird uh, in terms of like video format because for some reason right now it's coming in at a 4.3 aspect ratio and I don't really understand why. And OBS is just weird, like it, the pictures off center and all kinds of shit. So, Dave from Philly, what up? Two, it's thinking. So, a few things I wanted to talk about, um, which is it's it's funny. I really haven't been in too much of a gaming mood the last few weeks, but I've really 
kind of bounced back the last couple weeks and uh, I've been working on some stuff. <clears throat> so first thing, uh, I, I've kind of started formatting this is old shit and then new shit. Uh, so the old shit. Uh, first up, do I even have, here, hold on a second. So, gosh, it had to be four or five years ago. Uh, this company called Screens, uh, spelled S-K-R-E-E-N-S, uh, had a Kickstarter for a device that has four HDMI inputs and then an HDMI output, but you can stream directly from it. it didn't do recording. It had USB and everything, and there, there was a lot of promise. Uh, so I, I backed it, which I hate backing Kickstarters. I just I despise it. But I backed it, and that's uh, this device right here. So it, 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 it funded, and they actually built it. So there's the back of it. There's your Ethernet and USB, and there's all the HDMIs. And it had a lot of promise. <clears throat> um, I kind of forgot that I even had it. And I like gaming downstairs in my living room. Um, but if I want to stream... I either have to use Share, which, I mean, Share works. Share works pretty well, but, uh, like, streaming directly from the Xbox One, unless you use Mixer, because Microsoft owns Mixer, so basically the built-in streaming functionality is all through Mixer, and I don't like Mixer. I don't have, I think I have a channel, but I, I've never did, dealt with it. But streaming from Twitch directly off the console for Xbox One is a freaking nightmare. Uh, you have to use the Twitch app. And it's kind of built around the snap f functionality they used for a long time when they had a lot of voice command stuff, when they kind of forced you to use voice commands. <clears throat> and it, it works, and it, it, the quality's pretty good. I did Crackdown 3 with it and some other stuff, and it, it worked. But the main problem with the freaking Xbox One is their audio stuff. Uh, PS4... And it wasn't great when it first came out, but it was still pretty good. But the PS4 has really evolved in terms of being able to um, set up your audio preferences and make sure that you're using the correct microphone if you have a camera installed and also something else. <coughs> the Xbox One is not that svelte. Uh, the Xbox One, I don't have any wireless headphones that work with it. I have um, a pair of wireless A50s, the newer uh, model. And you have to have an Xbox One specific base to work with the Xbox One. So when you plug this one in and you plug the USB in for microphone, it won't even recognize it. So <clears throat> I was trying to use, I have uh, some wired A40s that work really well and the microphone's great. And they just plug into the controller, you know, the little controller port, which on the PS4 is really easy. Uh, the PS4, you plug them in and boom, that becomes your, your primary microphone and they just work. <gasps> Xbox One, though, there's really no simple way to go and make sure that when you plug something in, that the microphone's even working. There's no microphone test. There's no level test, level adjustment, nothing like that, that I can find at least. And it's a nightmare. So I've kind of given up, given up streaming, especially Xbox One down there, but it seems like, <clears throat> I mean, we... Dave streams like crazy, the poor guy. I mean, he, he he busts his ass on the streams. And I stream occasionally. I think MJC might start streaming again soon. I'm not sure. But we can never get people to watch our streams. And I don't understand what it is. We're playing games, even newer stuff, that nobody else is streaming and nobody seems to give a shit. And it's frustrating. I mentioned it last time, too. And, and Dave kind of took it the wrong way. He, he, he thought I was, like, complaining about him. I'm not. I, I'm impressed as hell that Dave puts in as much time as he does streaming. Uh, and, and he does really good. He, he, he does some really good stuff. He, he, he busts his ass on it. <clears throat> and PS Nation bought him a stream deck, so he can do better with that. So I'm trying to get him the tools to, to make things better. We just got him a chair kind of like this one. Uh, it's a different model uh, to, to use for like extended gaming sessions and to review it. So uh, hopefully that will work out. But... <clears throat> I, I, I remember that I had this thing. And it's got streaming built in. It's it's 
not really like a lot of functions, but it the, the, the quality's pretty good. I used it for an extra life at Josh's house. Boy, I want to say like three or four years ago. <clears throat> and at the time, we actually had a really big problem with it because apparently, well, not apparently, it's got four inputs on it, but the PS4 only works on one of the inputs for some reason. And we had two PS4s, obviously. So Screens actually sent me another device like this that we could daisy chain so that I could use two of these to stream all the stuff that I had at, at Josh's house, including the camera that I'm using today. And uh, I think we had the PS3s hooked up through it. Or, I can't remember, but we had a lot of stuff. <clears throat> but it was so weird that... And it, it was a red flag back then, but the, you know, everything is supposed to be the same on these. It's an older HDCP... It's an older HDMI uh, configuration. So already I was worried, but there's nothing in the documents, nothing you know that says anything uh, that only one PlayStation 4 will work on it. You can't plug multiple PS4s into it. You can plug multiple PS3s into it, multiple Wii U's, multiple whatever. But for some reason, the PS4s, you can only plug one in. <clears throat> so, but they worked with us, and then they got me another one. They, they lent it to us, or I live in Wisconsin, so I should say they borrowed it to us. Um, and it, it has a lot of promise. Uh, the streaming's really good, even over wireless. But the streaming quality, when you're wired, is really good. It's very solid, and you control everything from an app on like your phone or your tablet. Or it's got a uh, a web browser version too. But the, the tablet stuff works great. You can move the windows all around, rearrange them, and put labels up you can do backgrounds i mean they, they really busted their ass out and they worked with a lot of streamers because i think originally they didn't realize <clears throat> they were kind of selling this as put this in your living room and you can have like four different football games on one tv you know four different hdmi sources and have all these football games on it but i don't think they realized how difficult that is <clears throat> um, i plugged a chromecast into this uh just to mess around and it worked fine for a while and then all of a sudden when I did all that, they put kind of a beta firmware on this at the time that was beta like three or four years ago. And I just realized when I powered this thing back up, it's got the same same old firmware. But the problem is, I'm finally getting to it. I went out and started looking and I knew a while back that screens kind of started shifting their, their, their focus from these small, like, individualized devices for you know streamers or people that want to have stuff in their living room for multiple football games or basketball games or whatever uh, to more commercial use. So they wanted to sell these to companies to put in their conference rooms to have multiple HDMI inputs, which is kind of ridiculous. But they're selling these really expensive boxes now, and they're doing it all through dealers. They're not even selling anything themselves. But I started noticing that like their Twitter account was suspended for some reason. And their website, uh, they had a separate, uh, they went through Zendesk for uh, their support. And that site sh shut down. They have a regular website still, but there's no link for support or anything else. I'm like, did they die? And it was really frustrating because now I've got this weird firmware on this thing that they literally had to log into it remotely and install it. Like, I couldn't even install the firmware on this. So it, it, it really put me in a weird situation right now if I want to use it again. Because <clears throat> it doesn't work for shit. So I emailed the uh, Lynn that I, I've worked with at Screens for a long time, and she's still there. And, and screen, and I even sent the email, I'm like, is Screens still a thing? And she's like, yeah, yeah, I want to talk to you about it some more. And I said, yeah, that's fine. And then she disappeared. So I don't know what's going on, but really frustrating. And, and I know nobody really gives a shit about this, and I'm sure I'm probably the only person out there that has one of these that's in our listenership or whatever. But, <clears throat> you know... It is. It's a really nice device, and it's got so much promise. And the one thing that they were supposed to do uh, was the USB port on here. There's no way, if you're streaming from it, to have a microphone. You just don't have a microphone. And they were supposed to make it so that the USB device was going to allow you to plug, like, a, a Yeti microphone like I have or whatever USB microphone in to use as a mic. And it never happened, and it's really frustrating because... I think it'd be pretty cool. So I was, the whole thing was I wanted to plug this in down in my living room so I could stream from this and not use share <clears throat> because people seem to not like share for some reason, even though share is really good nowadays. I don't know if people realize that, but it's really good. But yeah, it, this became a whole debacle and I literally spent pretty much an entire day dicking with this thing to try to get it up and running again and did not have good luck. Did not have good luck at all. So anyway, uh, 
<clears throat> next thing, and I talked about it last time, but we got a lot more information literally the next day after I recorded uh, the TurboGrafx Mini. Uh, as everybody knows, I'm a huge TurboGrafx fan. Oh my god, look at all the chatters. I'm sorry. White Spy, how's it going? System Gamer, what's up? GR Sonic, what's up? Wolfpack Guy, hey. System Gamer again. Dave from Philly. Uh, Moobot, all hail the Moobot. I like her music. Who are you talking about? <clears throat> Who do you like? Whose mu music do you like? Did I mention somebody? Carly Ray Jepsen for anyone? No, I'm just kidding. <coughs> um, so the TurboGrafx Mini, they released the next day after I recorded uh, the full game list, which is, it's a little confusing, and I'm still trying to get a verification from PR. Um, but... They did a really good job. They didn't do a perfect job, but they did a really good job. Uh, the weird thing is, even the U.S. model is going to also have some Japanese games, which is awesome because there's some really good ones in there, including a system-defining game. Uh, but I'll just go down the list really quick. Uh, Alien Crush, which is a really fun pinball game. Victory Run, eh. It's a, kind of a, a, a rally racing game. It's, it's okay. Uh, Blazing Lasers, huge. It was a launch game, but it's still one of the best shmups on the system. It's one of my all-time favorite games on any platform. Uh, Newtopia 1 and 2, which are they're Zelda clones. They're really good, though, especially Newt Newtopia 2. They kind of took a lot of criticisms of the first game and, and updated a lot of things. Uh, the visuals are nicer. The music's really good. It's actually, it, it, at the time, it supported Dolby Pro Logic 2, which was really cool. So you get kind of a, a pseudo surround sound. Uh, Dungeon Explorer, which is a blast. It's a five-player... Uh, it almost looks like Gauntlet, but it's a five-player dungeon crawler, and it's a really good game. It's not Gauntlet. It's way better. A little bit deeper RPG uh, roots. Uh, R-Type, which is considered one of the better uh, home versions, home ports of the arcade, or the original arcade game. Motor Rotor, which is sucks. I'm just going to say, it sucks. It's a uh, up-to-five-player... Oh, over over uh, or, uh, from the top racing game uh, top down racing game and it's terrible uh, power golf which at the time was good now it sucks you play something like uh, neo turf masters or you know hot shots golf or whatever and there are some key elements especially gauging uh, how much yardage you have left and your what what the power needs to be to get to that yardage it's really tough to do in power golf uh, easebook one and two which, like I said last time, this is huge because this is telling us that they're going to include CD games. And, you know, you look at the Sega CD, and there's some good games in the Sega CD. There, there are. There's some good games. But they never really took full advantage of the Sega CD. Um, although the Sega CD was nice because it had the scaling rot rotation as well, uh, which the TurboGrafx didn't. It literally was just using it for CD music and more storage. But that was fine. Uh, but Easebook 1 and 2... You know, Easebook 1 was uh, originally on, I think, I want to say the, not the X68000, but on this older machine, and then it was also on the Master System. Uh, but you actually get two games there, and it's a lot of game. It's a lot of fun. Uh, really cool voice acting. They actually got professional voice actors, uh, and all that stuff is in here. That's just the whole CD image. Uh, Ninja Spirit, which was uh, a really popular arcade game back then. And the port to the TurboGrafx is really, really good. <clears throat> uh, JJ and Jeff, which was a launch game, it kind of sucks. Uh, it's kind of silly, cartoony. The funny thing is the Japanese version had a story behind it. It's actually based on a, a comedy show that uh, these two Japanese guys were on. And I'll, I'll go into more detail later on. Uh, Space Harrier, which isn't a bad port of the game. Uh, it's an old Sega arcade game. Military Madness, which is a turn-based strategy game uh, that's really popular. Uh, there's a few other versions out there. There's uh, Military Madness Nectaris on the Xbox or Xbox 360. I think it was on the original Xbox. Uh, but there's also a version in Japan, a follow-up called Neo Nectaris, which was basically Military Madness 2, but it was on a CD. Uh, but the first one I played with my cousin in Kansas City all the time. Uh, it's it's a lot of fun. <clears throat> Chuman, Chuman Fu... Very colorful graphics, good graphics, but it's basically kind of a puzzle-ish game uh, where you're pushing around these colored balls and trying to get them to the right spots. Psychosis, which is a, a side-scrolling shmup. I was never a big fan of it. I just played it not too long ago and still not a fan of it. Uh, Bonk's Revenge, 
I mean, Bonk, that was their mascot. Uh, Parasol Stars, which this is huge for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's a fantastic game. It's in the Bubble Bobble uh, series. Uh, very, very colorful graphics for the Turbo Graphics. Uh, I mean, they use a lot of the palette, but also it's big because this is a working designs game that, when it came over to the U.S. And that's awesome because working designs did some other great games on the, on the Turbo Graphics in the U.S. Uh, another one of those being Kadash, uh, which Kadash was an arcade game from Taito, I think. I remember correctly uh and it's kind of a side scroller action rpg ish like there's some rpg elements to it but it's a really fun game uh new adventure island from hudson uh which is it's a long-running series but the the turbo graphics game is really good air zonk <clears throat> side scrolling shmup with bonk's cousin zonk uh there was a contest back then to name that character and some turbo graphics fan got to name it uh that one i've mentioned before um, that one's really near and dear to my heart because uh, everyone knows him as Johnny Turbo, uh, but my friend John that worked at Turbo Graphics that I dealt with a lot when I did, did some of the testing, he just called me up one day and he's like, "Hey, I was testing the game at the time, the localization," and he goes, "Hey, uh, I'm going into a meeting in a half an hour, and I was supposed to name all the stages and all the characters, and I didn't do anything. So come up with names." So the, the names of all the stages and all the characters, except for Zonk, obviously, in that game, uh, I named for the U.S. version of it. So that was kind of cool. Uh, Soldier Blade, which is fantastic. Uh, it's in the Super Star Soldier, or the Star Soldier series. There's three or four of them on the Turbo Graphics. But Soldier Blade is, is awesome. Really good graphics. Really fun game. Uh, another CD game, Lords of Thunder. It's fantastic. The soundtrack is amazing. Uh, this really nice driving rock. Uh, and then Bomberman 93, which is great. I mean, for the U.S. market, Bomberman 93 is the best one you could get out of the out of the ones that were available. Uh, they did a Bomberman 94 in Japan, and it's really, really good. And it's actually on there, too. It's one of the PC Engine games that they're including. Uh, the cool thing is you can play it without the Japanese being localized pretty much. There's a story mode... There's a guide out there, I think. I, I'm pretty sure I looked it up to see if there was a guide. But, <clears throat> and then uh, PC Engine wise, <clears throat> the Kung Fu, which is actually China Warrior here in the U.S. China Warrior is an interesting game. It's a side-scrolling, like Kung Fu game, uh, and it was one of the launch titles. And back then, uh, it was it was kind of a big deal because the characters are humongous, and it was really showing off the sprite capabilities of the Turbo Graphics. And when I bought my Turbo from the JCPenney Outlet uh, store years and years ago in Kansas City, uh, I got it really cheap, and I got a bunch of games like Legendary Axe and uh, World Class Baseball and Blazing Lasers, but China Warrior was one of them. And <sighs> my friends and I all worked for hours trying to finish that game because it was all memorization. You have to know where all the, the, the enemies are coming from, and, and you're just not going to survive unless you start learning that stuff. But you're getting the Japanese version. It's it's okay. I mean, you're gonna you play it once or twice, and that's it. Uh, the Necromancer, I tried playing it because I have it, um, but it's got some RPG elements in it, and unless they translate it to English, I don't know if it's gonna be worth playing. Uh, Fantasy Zone, another Sega series that they they ported the first game over to the Turbo Graph or the PC Engine. You can definitely play it. Even if it's in Japanese, it's uh, a very unique shooter type game, but very cutesy graphics, really colorful, uh, well done on the, on the PC Engine. <clears throat> and then this next one I'd never heard of, and I have it, uh, Apparel Gate Ball. And it's basically a croquet game. You're playing croquet. Uh, I tried to play it, but there's a lot of Japanese in it, and you don't really, you have to do a lot of trial and error to figure out what you're doing. Uh, but... It's an interesting game. Uh, then they have the Japanese... So this is where it gets weird, because they're... The way that the, the games lists are, are set, it looks like they're doubling up on some of these games. Like, it looks like they're giving us the U.S. version and the Japanese version of some of these games, which makes no sense. So, Military Madness, Dungeon Explorer, Newtopia... I mean, you, you need that game in English, if you're... If that's all you speak. Bonk's Adventure, but I think Bonk's Adventure is also coming in the U.S. as well, but who cares? You can do that one. Easebook 1 and 2 Japanese, though. That's what their list shows. Why would you Why would you do that in the U.S. market? That makes no sense. 
Uh, Super Darius, which is a great CD game in that series. I love the series. The CD game I have, and I think it's fantastic. I, I love the Darius series. Uh, the soundtrack is so cool. Uh, Super Star Soldier, which is an awesome shmup. And then we're even getting two Super Graphics games out of the five available. I don't know why they just didn't do all five, but uh, we're getting... Uh, uh, let's see if I can say this. Daima Kaimura, which is uh, Ghosts and Goblins uh, for the Super Graphics, which is considered the best home version of that game. And then All Dines, uh, which is a side-scrolling shmup kind of... Kind of our typeish slash, I don't know. It, it, it's a really fun shmup, and it uses the super graphics better than most of the other games out there. Because uh, the super graphics, all it really did was add more video memory, um, so that stuff you can put more on the screen. But yeah, uh, and then we're getting Gradius, which is awesome. Uh, the home version of that on the PC Engine is fantastic. We're getting the Japanese version of Newtopia 2. I don't know why. Uh, but also Salamander, which is a Gradius spinoff, which is a really fun game. And then, like, Super Momotaro Dainetsu. Denetsu. Den, Dentetsu uh, 2, which is a dice-based board game. Is anyone going to play that if they don't know Japanese? It's just... Why would... I mean, I, I, I guess I get it, because Konami... You know, they're getting better... But for a long time, Konami's been known for managing things poorly, and they probably said just throw all the games on every one of them and sell them. Eh, whatever. Uh, Ninja Ryukenden, which is uh, basically a Japanese version of Ninja Gaiden. You can definitely play that. This next one, though, <clears throat> I'm really excited for, and I think it's the U.S. version, which is no big deal. But uh, there's a game called Star Parodier, Star Parodier in Japan. And it's basically a vertical shmup, but it's kind of cutesy, and it actually uses a lot of assets from different PC Engine games. So you can actually one of the you can select how your ship looks, and one of the ships can be Bomberman, and one of the ships can be a PC Engine shuttle, uh, which is this version of the PC Engine console that looks like a shuttle, kind of like a space shuttle thing. And I love the game; one of my favorites. I was actually testing the U.S. version of the game when everything went tits up. So I actually have the U.S. version, which the only difference in the U.S. version, because it's just a vertical shmup, is that some of the, or there's very little text in the game, but it, it's in English. The title was changed to Super Star, uh, Fantasy Star Soldier, so the title screen's different. And there was a kind of a little video intro, uh, animated video intro, in the Japanese version, and they took it out of the U.S. version. But that's it. But that, it's a great game. It's so much fun. I love the soundtrack, too. This one I'm, I'm really interested in. <clears throat> Snatcher, which in the U.S. is only available on the Sega CD with the U.S. translation. Everything else is always in Japanese. And this is, you know, one of Kojima's first games. And it's really well regarded. And they're putting it on here, but I'm wondering, are they going to do an English translation? Because I've never been able to find a fan translation for it. Because I wanted to, you know, patch it and, and play it myself. <clears throat> um, on the on the PC Engine. I'd rather play it on there than the, on the Sega CD. But I'm really interested, and I've asked uh, the PR people, and, and they're checking on it right now to see if there's going to be an English translation. Because, quite frankly, if I got this console, and all of a sudden I saw that Snatcher was on there, and I booted it up and I saw that it was in Japanese, I would go apeshit. I would lose my my shit if I saw that. So I hope they, they do it right. Uh, and then Gradius 2 Gopher, which is a blast. I love that they're putting Shoaniki on there. Uh, if you've never seen a Shoaniki game, you're missing out because they're hilarious. <sighs> and then another one that I love that they're uh, including for a few reasons because, in my opinion, it's the best in the series. But also... Uh, this game goes for a lot of money nowadays. I got it before it got really popular and, and expensive. Um, I think I have it. I think I have it right here. Uh, Dracula X, Rondo of Blood for the for the PC Engine CD. Uh, it's an awesome Castlevania game. It's basically the precursor to uh, Symphony of the Night. Uh, an amazing soundtrack. A really fun game to play, and I suck at it completely, but I love playing it. Uh, 
And again, I mean, there's some Japanese in it, but you don't really need it, like, to need to know, but you don't really get the story then, because it's all in Japanese. And then, like I said, Bomberman 94, Panic Bomber, which is kind of a tetris game, I think, I can't remember, it's like a Bomberman game, and it's in the Bomberman universe, but I can't remember exactly what it is. And then the last one, <clears throat> really impressed that they're putting this on there, too. Uh, this is our, an arcade game, or an arcade card game. And the arcade card is it's somewhere. But the arcade card was only brought out in Japan, and it's basically a new system card for the CD. Because for, for the, and if you didn't have a duo and you had a CD unit, you had to put a card in. Oh, I think my camera froze. Oh, no. I think my camera froze. That's still working. Um, you get this arcade card and it actually had more memory for games to use. So what they did, uh, I can't remember how many, I think it's like 12 games or 15 games that use it, but they ported over some of the uh, Neo Geo um, arcade games. So like the Fatal Fury games, Fatal Fury 2, Fatal Fury Special, uh, World Heroes, I think 1 and 2, and they're really, really good on the PC Engine. I mean, they're they look great compared to the Neo, the Neo Geo even. Uh, big sprites, really good color. I mean, they're, they're really good. <clears throat> but there, there's this one game. It's a vertical shmup called Genga Fukai Densetsu Sapphire, uh, which is a really rare game. I do own it. Uh, but it was really cool because they did kind of the pre-rendered graphics like in Donkey Kong. Um, but it also does pre-rendered polygons. And for the PC Engine, that was unheard of. But it's a really fun game. I stink at it. Uh, but it, it's really cool that they're including it here. I'm, I'm really impressed. I'm very, very impressed. I'd still really like to see Gate of Thunder on here. I think a lot of people think Gate of Thunder is a better game than Lords. I like them both. I would still love to see Lords uh, um, Devil's Crush, which is a much better pinball game than Alien. It's the follow-up to Alien Crush. Uh, so I would love to see that. <clears throat> um... And there's a few other games, too, but who knows if this is the final list. Maybe they'll make some changes. I'm not sure. Yeah, Dave, I realize that. I don't know what to do about it. I don't think I can fix it. So, uh, While it's running, I don't think I can fix it. Anyway, whatever. Let's see. Uh, Hey, there we go. <clears throat> okay. So on to the next thing. That's enough of my TurboGrafx fan. But, uh, so the thing about the TurboGrafx Mini is I have been recording gameplay for all these games. And I want to try to do a video feature on it. I'm not very good at the stuff, but I kind of want to show you guys every game that's on there, what it plays like, what it looks like, and then do some voiceover on it. Hey, the camera did get fixed. So that's what I'm working on right now. But the problem is... <laughs> recording gameplay footage from retro systems is a fucking nightmare um and i've got some different ways to do things so i've got a regular turbo duo it's right here uh i had it modded a while back with s video and i didn't do component for some stupid reason at the time because i was like s video is fine it's good enough because i like S video um but to record S video i've got two options I've got an old Elgato capture device that actually has S-Video in, but their software they've really kind of messed up lately, and it's kind of a pain in the ass. Uh, the other way is <clears throat> the RetroTank 2X, which I love. The RetroTank is, and I mentioned it last time, it's this little device, and it has composite in, it's got component in, and it's got S-Video in, and then it converts it to HDMI. <clears throat> and, like, if you plug it into the TV, it's great. But you plug it into a capture device, and I've got two sitting here. I've got the Elgato HD60S, and I've got the uh, Avermedia uh, Live Gamer Extreme 2. And both of those do not like non-HD resolutions. And they only want to use 16 by 9 aspect ratios. So... 
the Aver Media, you can kind of go in and I, I was using regular OBS and you can actually go in and edit the input to say I want like 1024 by 768. <clears throat> and normally it works. I've done it before, you know, and, and, and it's worked. It's always been kind of a pain, but my God, the, the, this time trying to record footage has been an absolute nightmare. So some of the games that are chip games I actually did off of the Mr. FPGA but the problem is the Turbo Graphics core is a little weird. <clears throat> it likes to kind of pause every now and then, depending on the game. It, it just seems random. But then other games I'm doing off the Turbo Duo, and then even other games I'm trying to do off the Super Graphics with the FPGA device on there that outputs to RGB, which then I take into the OSSC. But the OSSC is a real pain in the ass too because it doesn't have a scaler on it. <clears throat> so I've got this cheap-ass... Chinese scaler that basically will take any lower than 1080p signal and, and convert it to 1080p, but then it automatically tries to put it into widescreen. So it's kind of, it's just been a nightmare. <clears throat> but I'm hoping to get that video done in a couple weeks, and uh, I don't think the TurboGrafx Mini is coming out until like September, October. So I've got some time. Um, what's, what's the thoughts on Super Mega Baseball 2 coming to the Switch? Uh, I think it's great. Because, as you said right there, I've been playing MLB or RBI 19. I don't like the RBI series. I, I, I don't like the new ones. They're getting better for sure, but I don't like them. But Su Super Mega Baseball 2, man, it's a great game. They did a fantastic job. And I really want Metalhead to do well. And uh, if that means they can have to sell on another platform like they did when they moved to Xbox, uh, I'm fine with it. I want to see those guys succeed. They really... They put their heart and soul into that game, and it's a great playing baseball game. So, very happy with that. Um, let's see if I got any other questions here. Everyone chatting. <clears throat> Share? You like Share's music? Okay. Um, Wolfpack Guy says, I've been playing Neo Turf Masters on the iPad. Oh, God. Neo Turf Masters is one of the best arcade golf games ever. I mean, for me, it's right there on the same plane as Golden Tee. And I was in a Golden Tee league for years. Uh, I loved Neo Turf Masters. And if you can grab it on the PS4 or the Switch or the Xbox One, do it. <clears throat> I, I played on the Switch all the time. And I play on the PS4 all the time. But it's just a fantastic game. Although I do wish that they were using the CD version of Neo Turf Masters because the CD, the Neo Geo CD version of it actually has an extra course. You have to do these weird things to unlock it, and I've done that on my CD, but it, there's actually an extra course that we could have had, but they didn't think about that, obviously. <clears throat> um, I use an Extron Retro Tank and a... Yeah, I've got a couple DVD-O devices, System Gamer. I've got uh, the iScan, the regular iScan, and I've got the iScan Ultra, uh, but I haven't broken those out yet. They're in a box over here, but I just haven't gotten that far. But it, it's just a nightmare. I mean, these devices support non-HD 16.9 signals. I know that because I've gotten them to work. But my God, the software that comes with both of those devices has no flexibility at all. At all. It literally has a drop-down list, and you have to pick a resolution. So if you go into regular OBS, which I've had better luck than OBS for Streamlabs, you can go in and, and configure the video settings manually. You have to type in the resolution and everything, and it usually works, but ugh. <clears throat> what upcoming games are you excited about? Um, I do want to check out the new Wolfenstein with the two sisters, I you know I want to check it out. Uh, I didn't like Wolf Two though. I I haven't finished it yet, and I kind of lost interest with it. I was having a real problem with it. Um, that one looks interesting. Uh, I really don't know what's coming out. I'm trying to think of what else is hitting soon. I've got such a backlog; it's not even funny. So I haven't even really looked at new games lately. I'm looking forward to the Turbo Graphics Mini. I'm really looking forward to the Genesis Mini, Mini to see how it works out. Uh, I actually was lucky enough to get the the, the Tower of Power from uh, Play Asia <clears throat> because in Japan uh, they're releasing the Mega Drive Mini with a mock 32x and a mock Mega CD and a mock cartridge, so it's going to look like the full tower. 
and it, it it doesn't work like it doesn't do CD stuff if you have the CD ROM attachment or anything, but it just looks cool. So I'm excited about that. Um, yeah, using the DVD to to force four three. Yeah, that's that's how I would probably have to do it too. Um, gosh, what else is coming out? I honestly don't know what's coming out. I just got in the the, the test for Gears Five. I think it is. And that starts this weekend, but I've Rock is coming up for the whole weekend uh, for to take me out to dinner for my birthday and stuff. Uh, so I don't know how much time I'm going to have to play video games this weekend. <clears throat> but yeah, I don't know. I, um, the new Madden, nah. Which we haven't heard anything about. Surprise, surprise. Anyway, um, oh, I gotta find this. So this is pretty cool. Um, I mentioned the Poly Mega last time <clears throat> and for those that didn't hear what it was uh, it's it's a modular uh, gaming console that emulates a lot of old systems and and the cool thing is oh yeah Borderlands 3 I'll try it um, but it'll do like Sega Saturn games and it'll do Neo Geo CD TurboGrafx CD Sega CD so it's the first one that does boxed emulation for CD systems, which is awesome because it's got really cool upscalers and everything. Um, <clears throat> but one of the things that was really interesting to me was for PlayStation, they're including a game that only came out in Europe, and I always forget the name of it. But, uh, no, I didn't talk about that yet, system. Uh, I don't remember the name of it, but it, it kind of looked kind of Star Foxy, even though you're flying through, like, London and stuff, and I was really excited for that. <sighs> and they're pa packing that game in. Um, but now Polycom, or Polymega, Polycom, Polymega uh, announced that they're going to uh, include five games with the TurboGrafx-16 slash PC Engine module. Uh, not great games by any means, but it's cool that they're including games. So you get Motor Rotor 1 and 2. Motor Rotor sucks. 2's a little bit better, but it's still not that great. Double Dungeons, which is actually really fun. It's a split-screen RPG dungeon crawler from first person. Uh, Shockman, which, let's be honest, is a Mega Man clone. But it's a good game. And then Dragon Egg, uh, which... I was thinking it was Dragon Saber, but I don't know what Dragon Egg is, honestly. I have to check that one. But it's cool that, that Polycon, or, uh, Polymega is doing that. And I pre-ordered one. <clears throat> I was mad at the time that when you pre-ordered, they charged you right away. And it was like... 600 bucks um now i'm happy about that because the money's spent and now that i don't have a job i don't have to worry about them trying to hit my credit card all of a sudden out of the blue and i don't have a job <clears throat> but now it sounds like they might actually be including games like that for the other systems so this thing might come with like 20 25 games or something so hey ab dave subscribe to twitch prime thanks buddy <laughs> i just did that this morning too uh, yeah, um, Ginger, what was that? <coughs> hey, hush. Hush. Hush, that's your tail, dummy. Hey. Hey, stop. Sorry about that. <clears throat> um, anyway, so System Gamer says... Sorry, I had to yell the dog. Um, did I already talk about the limited run re-releasing old Star Wars games? I didn't, and I don't know how I feel about it. <sighs> Will you stop? For the one hand, they're, they're great games, but I don't know. I just, it, it's a weird, it's a weird formula. I mean, it's cool that they got the license, and I mean, that is a big deal. But I don't know if I'll get any of them. I do like the packaging, though, because the packaging for at least a couple of them, they made it look like the old blister packs for the original Star Wars uh, uh, action figures. I thought that was really cool. Um, oh. Will you stop? You're so quiet all day, and then you get a bark now? Jeez. It's a stop. Um, I think it's really cool. And, and, and you know, any way that you can bring... 
older games, especially games that are so well loved and so well regarded uh, to newer platforms, but also to the people that were too young to play them back then. I think it's awesome. Will you stop? Stop. Sorry about that. Anyway. Um, <clears throat> on to the new shit. So first off, uh, Dave brought this to my attention, and I think Dave, someone else told him about it, but there's this podcast player called Luminary, and we found out that they're running our podcast on it, but they're also running ads and making money off of our podcast, off our podcast feed. I've messaged them twice now, and they have not gotten back to me. So F Luminary, and uh, they can go fuck themselves. So I'm going to look for a way to block them. <clears throat> but uh, on the, uh, on a better note, has anybody seen the video for Iron Man VR? Because originally I thought, remember that Spider-Man VR thing that they had? It was kind of an interactive experience. Um, that's not Iron Man VR. It looks really cool. It looks like you're actually playing the game. You're actually flying in the helmet. Uh, the VR display actually has that whole display like you would always see with, with Iron Man. Really badass. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. <clears throat> Hopefully we get that one for review. I'm, I won't be the one doing it, but... Uh, Will you stop? Hush. You're just going to keep doing that all night now, aren't you? Jeez. Um, I'm looking... <laughs> then she does it again right there. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, I have not... I've hooked up my VR, and I just haven't gotten back into playing with it yet because, number one, it's up in the office, and it's hot up here, even with the AC on. So I normally don't want to have that VR headset on my face so I can sweat all over the damn thing. Um, but I just haven't been in the mood lately, um, but I'm probably going to get back to it soon. <clears throat> uh, the next thing, though, this is really exciting, and I bought a copy of this. We have one for review, and I don't think anybody's reviewing it yet, but uh, Blazing Chrome. If you are a fan of Contra at all, buy Blazing Chrome. It's an homage to the the Contra series. It's, yeah, it's got kind of the classic-looking graphics. Not NES classic, but, like, newer than that, 16-bit, 32-bit. It's really good. It's really good. I haven't gotten very far in it because it's a Contra clone and they're hard games, but uh, it's really good. And the music's really great, too. Uh, very, very happy with it. So I don't have a lot to say about Blazing, Blazing Chrome yet because I haven't gotten that far, but, yeah, if you like Contra, play it. Buy it. Play it. Uh, next up, this hits tomorrow. I'm recording on the 25th. So on the 26th, uh, a new show on Amazon Prime called The Boys looks awesome uh basically they have a bunch of superheroes in the world and this whole group gets together and and basically tries to start fighting them because a lot a few of them use their powers for bad as well they're not they're well beloved and everything else and there's like kind of a superman character but he's a total dick and he's always like screwing things up they show something in the trailer where a guy's got super speed, kind of like the Flash, and he just runs through somebody. Um, <clears throat> Contra Rogue Ops. Yeah, I heard about that, but I haven't seen it yet. Um, but I'm lo really looking forward to The Boys on Amazon Prime. It starts tomorrow, so I'm probably going to try to watch that next week. But next week's going to be full, too. My birthday's on, like, Wednesday, I think, so I have to obviously go to my parents' house. They want to take me out, but my parents just... It's been really weird lately, and I don't know if my stepdad thinks that he's going to die soon or something. I don't know what the deal is. <clears throat> but a couple months ago, he just decided out of, out of the blue, let's buy Glenn a new refrigerator. I didn't need a new refrigerator. I, the one I have, it's it's been in this house since I bought the house in 2004, but it worked. But they just decided they were going to buy me a new fridge, and we went through a lot of bullshit to try to get one, but... Here they bought me a new fridge, and now I have a water, a filtered water thing, and it's awesome. Um, but I'm sitting here recording Turbo Graphics footage actually the other day, and I get a phone call from my mom like normal, and she's like, "Oh, what are you doing?" I'm you know, just messing around. And she says, "Oh, come down to Fleet Farm." I'm like, what? What are you doing in Marshfield? I mean, I live like two hours away from them. 
So I went down to my, uh, Fleet Farm, and sure enough, my stepdad is like, we're going to buy you a lawnmower for your birthday. I'm like, you just bought me a fridge for my birthday. He's like, all right, we're going to buy you a lawnmower for Christmas, which is awesome. My my, lawn, my John Deere lawnmower that I actually inherited from them when I moved to this house, it just died. Uh, the engine broke a couple weeks ago, and I haven't been able to mow my lawn. And the city's giving me all kinds of shit, and I don't have a job, so I can't really hire somebody to do it. So I'm kind of up shit crick right now. So um, I got a brand new Husqvarna riding mower, and it's supposed to be delivered on Monday. So I got rock coming up for the weekend. We're gonna go see once a was it Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Tarantino's new movie. We're gonna go to my favorite place to eat, and we're gonna hang out all weekend. And then Monday I get my new lawnmower. And then I have to go to my parents on Tuesday for a few days for my birthday. And it's funny, my birthdays were never that big of a deal when I was growing up. I don't know if it was just because it wasn't a big deal or it was because we didn't have a lot of money when I was growing up. Um, but now all of a sudden it's a big thing and I have to go see my parents for a few days for my birthday. <clears throat> but because of the way I grew up, it's not a big deal to me. So, yeah. Um, all right, like three more things. Uh, so first up, I didn't see this in the theaters, and I really wanted to, and then I waited. Um, Alita Battle Angel from James Cameron's Lightstorm Entertainment, and Robert Rodriguez directed it. Uh, I am not a manga fan at all. I don't really watch a lot of anime. But I, I kind of figured this was going to be a good movie, and I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan of James Cameron. Um <sighs> I like the Terminator. I thought Terminator 2 was way too preachy until they re- re-edited it. Uh, I hated Avatar. I hated it. Uh, it was so predictable. I actually paused the movie like 15 minutes in, and I even said, like, here's what's going to happen. And I went through the entire movie, and like I just guessed at what was going to happen, and I was completely right. Um, yeah, Avatar is uh, a technical feat, but I just hated that movie. <clears throat> but... I really wanted to get it. I thought it looked cool. Uh, Christoph Waltz is in it, and he's one of my favorite actors. Uh, holy crap. The the 4K Blu-ray set is amazing because not only does it come with a 4K Blu-ray, which their 4K is fantastic. It's not just up-converted from 1080 or 35 millimeter. It's true 4K. <clears throat> it also comes with, in the box... A regular Blu-ray of the movie, a digital copy, and the 3D Blu-ray. All in the one box. That's unheard of nowadays. And I got it from a U.S. retailer. Because 3D movies lately, I've had to go to Play Asia or I've had to go to Amazon UK to get them. Like, all the Marvel stuff I have to buy from Amazon UK. So I've got Captain Marvel on the way. It's taken forever to get here, but that's on the way. And Like, DC stuff you can still kind of get in the U.S. sometimes. Like, Aquaman... Walmart had, Best Buy has 3D stuff every now and then, so I've got uh, um, Shazam 3D coming from Best Buy. But Marvel, I have to always go to uh, Amazon UK, and it sucks. Just because it takes forever to get here, it's more money, and blah, 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 blah. But whatever. But uh, Alita Battle Angel, really enjoyed it. If you were kind of on the fence about it, if you don't know the story or whatever, don't worry about it. You don't don't have to know the manga to, to appreciate it. Uh, I thought it was really good. I, I really did. I, I enjoyed the heck out of it. And I haven't watched it in 3D yet. Uh, I just watched it in 4K. Uh, but I, I I can't wait to see it in 3D because, man, it's a beautiful movie. So definitely give it a try. <clears throat> um, two things left. First off... <clears throat> the dates for... Midwest Gaming Classic for 2020 have been announced. And tickets are on sale. Reservations are available. So I'm going to have to do that after I'm, I'm done here. Uh, MGC 2020 is April 9th, or April 12th, 13th, and 14th. Which is a little scary. Obviously, they have to work around the schedule of the Wisconsin Center. They can't just pick and choose like they used to be able to with the Brookfield Sheraton. We've had weird weather the last couple of years. This year wasn't too bad until the last day, but the year before that, we had a really bad snowstorm. Um, so I'm a little weirded out by that. But 
it's exciting. I love MGC. I will definitely be there. I'm probably going to help at the museum again. They've already been bugging me about that. Um, there's a story up on our website at psnation.com if you want to see some of the details. Uh, there's a link in that article to go to the website and pre-order your tickets if you want and to also link over to the hotels if you want to get a, a, a reservation with their with their better rate. And the rate is better, actually. It's, it's a decent rate. But, yeah, it's great. Midwest Gaming, Gaming Classic. It's funny that we're already talking about it in July because that just happened, like, what was the last one? April or May. So it's weird that we're already talking about it, but uh, I will definitely be there. I'm, I, I love that event. I love seeing everybody there. So hopefully uh, all y'all can make it. <clears throat> That'd be really cool. But come if you can. All right. Uh, my last item, although I have a couple of questions. Here we go. So, Streets of Rage 4 is, a th- is, is happening, which is badass. And it's legit Streets of Rage 4. It's not that fan-made game, which it's all right, but not great. Uh, but they finally announced some details on the soundtrack, because when this was first announced, everybody right away was like, well, is Yuzo Koshiro going to be doing any of the music? He did the music for the first three games, and one and two are awesome. Uh, the third game, Streets of Rage 3, he did this weird experimental thing with the samples, and it's just this really like space agey fucking weird. It's not good. Um, but they announced finally that Yuzo Koshiro and Motohiro Kawashima are both contributing to the uh, the the soundtracks on Streets of Rage 4, which is huge. Um, there's also so, Yuzo Koshiro has done a lot of the Sega games. So, you did like Sonic the Hedgehog, Re- Revenge of Shinobi, Shenmue 1 and 2, Super Smash Brothers Brawl uh, for the 3DS, uh, and, Wii, uh, and Wii U. He also did the music for ActRaiser 1 and 2, which ActRaiser is considered one of the best soundtracks of the 16 bit era. Um, Motohiro uh, Kawashima did Streets of Rage 2 and 3 along with Yuzo. Uh, Shinobi 2, Batman Returns. Uh, Yoko Shimomura. Did Street Street Fighter 2, um, Kingdom Hearts 1, 2, and 3, Super Mario RPG, Legend of Momoa, or Legend of Mana, I'm sorry, uh, Parasite Eve, and then Hideki, wow, these names, Naga Naganuma did the music in Jet Set Radio and Future, Super Monkey Ball, Sega Rally 2, and then Keiji Yamagishi did the music for Ninja Gaiden, Tecmo Bowl, and Captain Subasha, Subasa, among other things. It's huge. Uh, I, I've said long for a long time now. My favorite series on the Genesis slash Mega Drive has been the Streets of Rage series. I love them. I, I love old school beat 'em ups, and <clears throat> I'm very, very, very excited for Streets of Rage Four. Uh, I, I, I like the graphic style that they're using. It looks like it plays really well. But one of the things about that series was always the music and how damn good it was. Because not only was the music good, but they were doing stuff with the Genesis sound chip that nobody thought was possible and it sounds fantastic um so i'm really excited for this and i i honestly i hope they release uh the soundtrack on vinyl which they did on streets of rage one and two and i wasn't able to get them they were really really limited and i didn't have a record player at the time so i was kind of pissed off <clears throat> but uh man is that exciting uh, I'm. If you you were talking before, I had the question before about what are you looking forward to, and Streets of Rage Four is definitely one of them. Uh, all right. Let me see. I know there were some questions on Facebook. Um, I do like this one from Andrew Cook. It's a bit weird if you just sat there talking to yourself or something. That's what I do. Um. Carl Sawinski says, I'm interested in hearing your latest opinion on service games versus once and done games. Um, I'm fine with both. I haven't been playing um, Division 2 or Divi- or uh, Destiny 2 or anything like that lately. Uh, not for any specific reason. Uh, I think they're great games. Uh, I just haven't really found the time to get on and play with anyone, and I haven't been able to hook up with anyone, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, One-and-done games I've always really liked. 
I went back and started playing the DLC for Horizon Zero Dawn recently. Uh, I need to go back and finish Spider-Man still, which is a fantastic game on the PS4 and needs to be uh, finished. Um, But I've just been so distracted with trying to get the Extra Life packages because Extra Life, I think what I'm going to do with the prizes is we're going to do kind of mega packs. So you're going to get like, I don't even know what it is, how many Ubisoft games there are. Uh, you know, different titles. You're going to get a mega pack of like 15 games or something. I am not shipping 500 games. I'm just not doing it. So I'm going to figure out a way to package all that stuff up and send like kind of bigger prize packs out to the people. Because the other thing was we didn't get nearly as many donations as we used to. And yeah, it'd be a cool thing if everyone that donated would get a prize. I'm just not packaging that many freaking games up and sending them. I'm just not doing it. It, it. It's way too much work. So, I think that's what I'm going to do. I I started messing with it today to try to figure out what they're going to be. Because we don't have just Ubisoft uh, stuff. We have a couple games from Capcom. We've got um, uh, some other stuff. So, I just got to figure out what they're going to be. So, but yeah. um, I don't really... Carl, I don't really have an opinion one way or the other. I mean, I think they're these developers are learning you know you see the division compared to the division two and the division was kind of frustrating to me especially the leveling and also when it would auto level people uh, when you would join up with friends and stuff like that i think the division two handles that a lot better because uh, the first game was very very frustrating uh destiny 2 i love the fact that they're still doing stuff with it uh fuck raids i'm probably never going to do a raid again in destiny in destiny uh i th- you know, they started reacting to people saying the raids are too easy, and then they just made them these multi-segmented, ridiculous challenges, and I, I just don't have the patience for it anymore. <gasps> but I love the shooting in Destiny. I mean, Destiny 1 and 2, the shooting is so damn good in those games. Um, but there's other stuff. You know, Ubisoft's got a couple more things. Uh, coming out and and they've really kind of taken the mantle up with some of those games as as a service type platforms um but one and done are great too or not one and done but you know beginning to end i love that i love experiencing a story and and that's one of the things that with games like the division and with destiny etc i never really experienced the story well enough i mean it's definitely better in destiny too but it it's it's like it doesn't sink in well enough to me and I would prefer to play God of War or I prefer to play Spider-Man or Horizon Zero Dawn because that's got the story integrated and it's not just I don't know as Dave said they need to reward players time but have hard content with great loot see loot to me is I fucking hate it I hate the loot mechanic I hate it you know, I'm, I'm with you guys playing Destiny 2, and everyone's like, well, did you get this gun? And uh, I don't give a fuck. What I care about is the gun that I get, does it feel good? Does it kill? Is it effective? And that's it. I don't care how it looks. I don't care. Like, that's my biggest complaint about Blops 4. Blops 4, I've been playing a lot because I like just kind of that mindless get in there and play an FPS, but at the same time, Blops 4 is like, oh, you just unlock this this new box in the black market, and you go, and it's like, oh, here's some face paint. I don't give a fuck about face paint. Do like the old days. Unlock a new gun. Unlock new add-ons for the gun. Give me something that I can actually use. I don't care about the paint. And the funny thing is, because you're using the, the different operators in Blobs 4 now, finding or trying to remember how to go back and edit the different operators and like put different face paint on and put different it's a pain in the ass I, it took me like 15 minutes to remember how to do that it's it's absurd so hopefully we're getting away with that or away from that now since the loot box thing is kind of going away finally but i really hate the mechanic and and uh blops for and but they're really ingenious about it like sometimes they'll drop something that's only for use in zombie mode or only for use in their battle royale mode, you know, and they're trying to entice you to, oh, now you can use this over 
Battle Royale, you'll look really cool. Look at that sticker you just got. Woo! Yeah. I just don't like loot. I don't like loot systems at all. Maybe it's the old guy in me. I don't know. But I just don't like loot systems. I would rather have me working toward getting a new weapon that I know that I want. I mean, it's a little bit different in, in like Call of Duty compared to Destiny because Call of Duty, you're going after weapons that you probably know about already because they're based on real weapons. Destiny, I mean, there's some great weapons out there. And I'm sure there's something I probably still need to open up or, or you know acquire. But a lot of times it seems like with Destiny, it's more about what it looks like. Like, I'll see people tweet, like, oh, look how cool this is. I don't give a fuck about how it looks. I just want it to work. You know? <clears throat> yeah, Pulse Auto, blah, 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 blah. I get it. I, I, I'm not downing it. I love Destiny 2. I really, honestly, I do. I, I think it's a great game. I think it's a, it, it's a great upgrade to what Destiny was. I think they really listen to a lot of the people. It's not perfect by any means, obviously, but I really like what they did with it, and it's a beautiful game, even on the regular PS4. On the on the PS4 Amateur, even, it's it's great-looking game. Uh, but it plays great. I mean, the, the shooting is fantastic in those games. They really outdid themselves with the shooting. Because a lot of times you get into kind of these more massively, I don't want to say MMO. Oh, my camera went to shit again. Um, I don't, you know, you go into these things, and it's like you say attack and then you see the character go through an animation to attack but it's just a a generic attack you know <clears throat> i'm trying to fix my my camera hold on a second there we go um so i don't know i mean if i had the choice carl my 30 minute answer to you that's just me rambling away. If I had my choice, I'd probably prefer something like a Battlefield, where I don't care that Battlefield has a story. Eh, Battlefield's a bad, a bad choice. Um, I would prefer something like a Spider-Man or a God of War or Horizon Zero Dawn or you know, something with a really long campaign in it, um, because I usually separate the other stuff like the multiplayer and I know you didn't ask about multiplayer but my gaming preferences I want to play Battlefield online I want to play Call of Duty online but I also want to play and this part of it is kind of more recent but I really want to play Horizon Zero Dawn or I want to play through the whole story of God of War or I want to you know I want to get to that end because <clears throat> to me that's satisfying getting to the end of a story is satisfying so, I don't know. It's a shitty shitty answer. I'm sorry. <sighs> um, Dave Walters says, What are your thoughts uh, of when the next consoles will be coming? Also, what do you think will be the hardware in them and cost? Thanks for reading. Two! Uh, I think the new PlayStation, PlayStation will probably be next year, 2020. Uh, Cost-wise, will probably be, I would say, pretty comparable to what the PS4 was at launch. Um, you know, you got an SSD in there now, but they're getting way cheaper. Um, per, you know, it's it's funny when we bring up the consoles because obviously I play on the on the PlayStation 4 Pro a lot. I've got two Pros now, <sighs> um, but I was just on my Xbox One X about two hours ago, and. All we hear, it's the most powerful console available. It's all we hear. It's all about the teraflops. That is the slowest, clunkiest interface in the world. It's so frustrating to use just the interface to get through the fucking menus in that thing. Um, so it's not just about the hardware. It's about the OS, and it's about the software itself. And, and that's what's funny to me, because Microsoft was always the one that their software, their operating system was always the best one out there. And the PS, the, the PlayStation was always better hardware. That was kind of the, the, the argument for years. And yeah, they've got great hardware and there's some cool stuff on the Xbox One X right now and the S, but their backward compatibility is fantastic. And that software, and that kind of proves my point a little bit, but the hardware, sure, it's there, but nothing uses it. 
mean, there's a, occasionally there's a game that'll use the hardware better, but it's a, it's such an incremental upgrade over the PS4 Pro. You know, what you're seeing on the X is really more instances of true 4K resolutions. I don't care about that. Yeah, I have two different 4K uh, displays, but I don't care. If, the, if it looks good, that's all I care about. 4K is bullshit, and now it's going to be 8K in the next generation. I guarantee you. I don't care. I would rather have HDR color and HDR uh, lighting than I would for H- or for 4K. I don't care. So what do I think of the next hardware? I mean, we already know essentially what's going to be in the PS5. If, I'm just going to call it PS5. Uh, it's AMD Ryzen CPU, which is awesome. I have a Ryzen in my PC here. It's great. Uh, it sounds like we're going to get ray tracing, which is not surprising at all. Uh, I was hearing for months that we're going to see that. <sighs> and that's cool. Uh, ray tra- real-time ray tracing is really kick-ass. And uh, it makes a big difference in some games right now. But the cool thing is that some developers, like like um, you know some EA, EA developers and some other ones, uh, are kind of testing the waters right now with ray tracing. And I think by the time these consoles come out, they're going to know what they're doing with it. And the funny thing is, it almost sounds like what we know so far, the hardware of the of the two main consoles, the PS5 and the Xbox 2, I don't know, the hardware itself is going to be pretty similar. CPU and, and GPU-wise, they're going to be pretty similar. They, I think they're all from AMD. So it's going to get to that point where now the decision's really going to be about what exclusives do you want to play because hardware-wise, I think they're going to be very equal. <clears throat> I mean, somebody might pull something out of left field. Sure. And that's fine. But if it comes down to exclusives and I wasn't a fanboy, I own, what, three Xbox Ones now? Uh, so I'm not that big of a fanboy, but... Uh, if it's exclusives, I can go PlayStation any day, any day of the week. Any day of the week. The exclusives on the Xbox, I don't give a fuck less about those. Gears? Eh. I've never finished a Gears game. I've gotten bored. Halo? I don't like it. I actually just played the Master Chief Collection the other day. Because um, I have it. I don't like Halo. I just... It doesn't feel right. It, it Like when you're shooting your regular gun, your regular machine gun... It doesn't even feel like you're shooting anything. It's almost like you're just shooting blanks. Like, yeah, you see the muzzle flash and you see whatever, but it doesn't seem like anything's actually hitting your enemies. Like, you don't see any interaction. So, I don't know. I, I'm just, I'm weird about it, I know. And <clears throat> I got the one Xbox exclusive that I cared about, and that was Crackdown 3. I probably like it more than a lot of the Xbox fanatics out there because I've seen some videos where. Xbox fanboys and people that only do an Xbox channel are ripping on it, and I think it's I think it's pretty damn good. Uh, I, th- I actually I thought it was better than I than I expected. So it is what it is because I don't like the Forza series at all. Uh, I have Forza Horizon Four. Yeah, it looks good. I get bored with it though. Uh, and then Forza, whatever the newest Forza is, it still doesn't feel like you're on the tarmac. It doesn't feel like to me, it just doesn't feel like you're on the road. And uh, the brakes feel squishy and, and whatnot. Man, the camera keeps dying. What the fuck? This thing worked perfectly the other day. Yeah. <clears throat> so anyway. Sorry, I had to fix the camera quick. Um... Yeah, I don't know. I I mean, I'm sure I'll buy both. Uh, I mean, what do we think about the Switch Lite? I mean, I, I know I talked about that last time, but even the more I see about the Switch Lite now, I could care less. I don't play my Switch that much to begin with, and to me it's a downgrade. You know, they're taking away docked play, which is the only way I play that thing, and ah, I don't care. All I care about now, Nintendo-wise, is that uh, I've got that that Game Boy Advance consoleizer coming in a couple months where you have to... Mark's going to solder everything up, but basically it makes the GBA an actual console that hooks up to your TV via HDMI, and it's got a Super Nintendo controller port on it, and you can play... Because I can't play handhelds with my left hand, 
and this gives me the opportunity to play real GBA hardware again with a joystick, and I'm excited as hell. GBA was a fantastic platform, and I'm really excited. I've been uh, uh, emulating it a lot lately on the Shield TV because uh, I can use the, uh, the the Shield controller. It's kind of like an Xbox uh, 360 controller. So, <clears throat> anyway. System Gamer, I know I'm just getting ready to disappoint myself, but please let there be PS2 two backward compatibility. Oh my god, that'd be amazing. Uh, I would love it. <clears throat> I'm, I, I was always hoping that what they're doing in PlayStation now was just kind of a a test. Uh, I do. It, it's funny, you know. You talk to the people from PlayStation about backward compatibility uh, because the PS3 had it. Obviously, uh, the original PS3 had PS1 and PS2 backward compatibility. Uh, if that if that PS3 was connected to the internet, it would actually report back uh, anonymous stats to Sony, and they know everything. They know if you're playing games in backward compatibility or not. And everyone I talk to that deals with it, because I, I know the guy that handles the backward compatibility stuff, he said that their numbers were insanely low on people that use BC. So I get it. I get why they don't want to put money and resources into the development of that back then uh, and, and why they took it out of the, the later PS3 models because that's less of a cost to manufacture. <clears throat> but I think... <sighs> I would love to see, and we'll never see it, but I would love to see the actual stats of BC usage on the Xbox One. Because, like, I download a lot of stuff on the Xbox One. Uh, with Gold, they give you a free backward-compatible game every month. Uh, this, I mean, I played Red, the first Red Dead Redemption on there a lot. I streamed it for Extra Life. And it's cool. Their backward compatibility is really good. Uh, apply some nice filters. You know, there's some really cool stuff. But it, I was when I was on the Xbox One today. That's kind of what I was looking at. And, and the the thing to me, it almost feels like they're kind of scaling it back a little bit, like they did in the 360. Because the 360, you remember, they added backward compatibility on there. And when you put the disc in, it would download something off the internet. It would download the whole game. And they scaled it way back and they stopped doing it. And it didn't do it very long. <clears throat> they're doing it on the Xbox One, but it seems like they're kind of scaling it back again. I mean, that's not a huge deal to me because I don't really have a lot of 360 or Xbox games anyway. <clears throat> uh, well, PS4 backward compatibility is going to be in the PS5. They've already said that. But I think where they have a problem with earlier <clears throat> systems like PS1, 2, and 3, mainly 2 and 3, is that those consoles used a pretty intricate and different hardware architecture. PS1, I mean, <clears throat> the reason the PS1 games work on PS2 and PS3, especially PS3, uh, PS1 games work in there because they have a PS1 CPU in there that they use for the controllers. So they just run it through that and then it, and it goes. Uh, even the non-backward compatible PS3, like the Slim and everything, a PS1 game will work on those. Some people don't know that. I'm Wolfpack, I, I feel differently. I would love to see, especially PlayStation 2 backward compatibility because there are so many great games on the PS2 and they can be gotten so cheaply right now. Uh, I would love to see that because there, there are some fantastic PS2 games out there. <clears throat> so... Oh, man. What do we got here? Some bits. Baddest page. Nice. Um, yeah, I, I've, I've definitely changed my opinion of BC lately. I use it a lot on my... I have two 60-gig PS3s, so I still use the backward compatibility on those. Uh, the only time I don't is when I have a Japanese game. Uh, but I actually do use it. I was just playing a PS2 game last week. Uh, I wanted to see the uh, original Jack and da oh Jack Jack Racing, whatever it is, Jack X Racing or whatever. I wanted to see that off the PS2 disc and compare it to what we have now and, and see how the filtering is and everything. But I do use it. So and that's why I've hoarded old 20 gig and 60 gig <laughs> PS3 models. My parents have one. 
So if I ever have all these other one die other ones die, I still know that I can go to their house because they use it for DVD and Blu-ray play playback. I bought it for them for Christmas one year because I always had it in the back of my head like, oh, if I ever have a problem with backward compatibility, I'll I'll go grab that PS3 and give them something else to play movies with. <clears throat> Uh, I just say that BC, I have a toddler and I have to pick and choose what games to play. Sure, that makes sense. That makes total sense. I would I would love to see an across the board BC though. I mean, that was one of the coolest things about the PS3. I mean, a lot of people spec speculate that the reason they did that in the PS3 was that there weren't enough games available, and there weren't. I mean, <clears throat> the library for the PS3 was pretty paltry for a few months after launch. So this gave people a way to go in and play with filters, and, and PS2 games looked really nice. Um, but it, it's it, it, I really like it. I wouldn't say I use it every day, obviously. I don't use it every day on the Xbox One either. But it's really nice to have. And when you're paying this much, especially PS3, I mean, 60 gig was 600 bucks. When you're paying that much for a console and there's not many games available, well, at least you can go play your PS2 stuff still and your PS1 stuff. So, yeah. Anyway, let me see if there's any other questions on. If you guys got a question, uh, put it in the chat. Uh, I thought there was another question here. Eric Hofer, thoughts on the R-rated Harley Quinn cartoon? Yeah, I'm kind of tired of Harley Quinn and what that character has become. I, I loved Harley Quinn on. Batman the Animated Series, um, love the character. But what they're doing with, with Harley now I think is really annoying. Uh, she's overused. It's because all the hot girls want to cosplay as her, so they have to make her popular. Um, what they did with her in Suicide Squad was hilarious. The fact that now all of a sudden she's a total badass and proficient with guns and with this big hammer that she has and she can like do kung fu and gymnastics she was a psychiatrist for fuck's sake it's just annoying I, 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 I hate that kind of shit so what do I think of it? meh I mean I just watched uh, oh what was it there's a new Batman animated movie that just went up on Vudu and Amazon Prime it was Oh, Batman Hush, which I'd never read that book. Uh, I'd heard a lot about it, but I'd never watched that. Uh, the movie's good. Uh, the animation's fantastic. Voice acting is fantastic, like usual. Uh, it, you know, it's Warner Animation. Warner Animation's really good. Uh, but I, I, I do recommend it highly. Uh, there's some other animated stuff that I wasn't that thrilled with <sighs> the last few years, but Batman Hush is very, very good. Uh, I just picked that up the other day. So... But yeah, Harley, eh, whatever. I mean, Harley's in this one. She's in Batman Hush. Uh, and they don't u they don't overuse her, which is nice. You know, they use her for what she's needed to be used for. And that was it. Yeah, I'm, I'm so sick of Harley. And it's not the character's fault. It's just how people are overusing her. I think is the best way to say. Uh, oh, what's this? Jack and Dexter all day. I agree. Dog of Devros, Devros. Uh, I agree. I, I'm a big Jack and Daxter fan. I have all the <clears throat> remasters that came out on PS4 digitally. Uh, I need to play them. I just haven't gotten the time to sit down and, and focus. Uh, but I'm a, I'm a big fan of those, even over Ratchet and Clank. Honestly, I, I love Ratchet and Clank, but I was always a Jack and Daxter fan more. So yeah, I totally agree. Uh, let me see if I missed anything else here. Dave defending De uh, Destiny. Dave defending Destiny. Just kidding. Uh, oh, Wolfpack guy, you gotta go. I'm gonna go soon anyway. I've been doing this long enough, I'm sure. <clears throat> um, yeah, so keep a lookout on their Twitch channel because I'm probably gonna... There's a game that, that just showed up one day called For the King. I have no idea what it is. But I, I keep saying I'm going to stream it. And I wanted to stream it upstairs, but it's been so hot. Um, <clears throat> but I want to stream it and see what the hell it's all about. I'm sure it's an RPG something or other. But, uh, yeah, keep your eye on, on twitch.tv slash psnation. 
Uh, I think Dave's home now. I'm not sure for, but Dave's been on vacation, and I was I was planning on doing some streams, and I've just been really busy with lawnmower shopping and trying to find a job that I haven't had time to stream much, uh, and recording all this Turbo Graphics footage. By the way, uh, the people that put those videos up on YouTube, kind of not the top ten list really, but you know, like the the ones with all the gameplay footage. I'm really impressed by those guys because it's a lot of work. <laughs> Because you all of a sudden have to be semi-proficient in like 20 different games. So, really impressed. But, um, yeah, I think that's it for me. Unless anyone else has got any questions. I think I'm done. But I'm uh, looking forward to watching The Boys on Amazon Prime. I just don't know how many days I'm going to have to wait. And uh, some Tarantino action this weekend. Really excited for that. Um, Yeah. But don't forget uh, our website, psnation.com. I actually wrote a review, and it went up today. Surprise. Uh, it's this uh, BenQ monitor that I've had for a while that I keep. I actually thought I had written the review, and I looked the other day, and I didn't. So I wrote it <gasps> wrote it and got it posted. Um, but don't forget the forums, psnation.com slash forums. Don't forget our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash psnation. Follow us on Twitter, at psnation. I'm at torgopsn. Uh, the new podcast from MJC and his buddy since Dave was on vacation uh, went up about two hours ago or whatever. Um, so that's available. This will probably go up early next week. Sometime we'll let we'll space them out a little bit. Plus, I don't have time to edit right now. But hopefully, y'all enjoy it. Uh, if you guys got topics or whatever, shoot me an email, Glenn at psnation.com. That's Glenn with two ends. Uh, put something in the forums. Go to the podcast section of the forums, and there's something there for for this little whimsical podcast. Um, but thanks for being involved. Thanks for everybody for watching tonight. Uh, thanks for listening and stuff and junk. But all right, I'm leaving. Bye. Get out there and play some games.